Hello and welcome to Aqua Lifestyle. I'm Glenn and today in part three of our multi-part series on the Lowrance Elite FS we're going to talk about setting it up for salt water and we're going to talk about your basic, your side scan and down scan setup. Live site and active target were covered in our freshwater video setup video so check that video for setup on those. All right let's get started. Let's start by powering up. Press the power button and it will flash the Elite FS and it will load in. Once you get your home screen you can click the cog at the upper left hand corner. We're going to select sonar and first it's going to ask you internal or network sonar. You're going to set those up depending on where the sounder information is coming from. If you're running a multiple screen system it's going to be a, a network sonar uh, if you're just running it by itself, it's an internal sonar. So there are other functions down here, including installation, and you'll see the different options on the menu as you scroll through here. Live site and active target down at the bottom if you're adding those features. So let's get started with the installation. The sonar installation, it's gonna, the menu's going to pop up and it's going to ask you the source you can name what the source is so you can go in and type a, a specific name if it's a bow display or a helm display um, you can adjust your depth offset your water speed calibration if you need to make adjustments on that water speed averaging temperature and transducer type now this is very important you're going to need to select what transducer is driving this display and if you're not sure what it is, you can look about six inches down from where it plugs into the unit. The plug of the transducer should have a little ID label that will identify which one it is. So select the correct one, press enter, and you should be good to go. And it's very important to select the right transducer. Okay, so let's go back to sonar. And we're going to go through the menu options here on the sonar. Um, the mode we're in. You can set it for general, shallow, fresh, deep, slow troll, fast troll, clear water, ice, and those are your options. Of course you're going to want to select the one that's most appropriate for the type of fishing that you're doing. Generally speaking, general is a good all around, especially if you're shifting from shallow to deeper water. Shallow, they claim is 60 feet or less. In reality, 100 feet or less, it works well. Uh, deep, if you're obviously doing deeper fishing, uh, fishing ledges, canyons, that kind of stuff, you're going to want to set it to that. Now, you notice my menu disappeared there um, after a few seconds. By default, it's not going to do that. But to make that menu disappear so you have your f full sonar screen, let me show you how you do that real quick. We are going to go back to our settings. We're going to go to our system settings. And we are going to go to advanced. User interface. And here you have auto hide menu. Now I've turned this on and I like having this because after 15 seconds it goes away. I don't have to worry about it or trying to clear it out. And I don't have to worry about the menu staying on the screen and taking up valuable real estate on my screen. So turn it on or off just by touching the button. We're going to leave it on there. And then you can close out. And you'll see if I touch the menu and do something with the menu, uh, we go in and select more options or go back. If I leave it alone in 15 seconds, that will disappear and we'll go back to the full screen. And there it goes. All right, let's continue with the menu. Okay, so on the menu here, the next item is range. And it's set to auto 15 feet. It's going to scale automatically. And you're going to see it has here is the depth changed. It changes the scale. And you don't get a nice fluid image. It can be difficult sometimes to see how it kind of jumps around makes it a little bit difficult to uh, understand what you're looking at sometimes. What I like to do with that is if I know my depth is going to be, let's say, anywhere from 15 to 40 feet, I'll set my depth range. I'll take the auto off and I'll set it to 40 feet. 
what that does is it's going to put your range scale here 0 to 40 but it's going to keep you uh, the image the same throughout the screen from one end to the other it's not going to be jumping around and changing scale now 40 feet might be a bit much here we've got a little bit of leeway so you see I'm not enjoying the full screen I've got kind of a, a, a wasted space down here so let me go back in and I'll adjust that to 30 feet and if I go back now you can see it's giving me more information and it's not jumping around so right now at 30 feet that works really well I like having it set as that that way so it doesn't jump around as much uh, especially if you're in shallow water and it kind of fluctuates a few feet one way or the other setting up your your range so it doesn't jump around you manually set it to a depth that you know is going to be a safe depth and and kind of keep this in the lower third which is your bottom reading um, that's really the way to do it now if you're not sure what you're looking at here we do have some other videos uh, we've got some links to them you can check those out to understand better understand the fish finder and what you're looking at okay so we'll go back to the menu here we've set our range at 30 feet the next thing here is also very important frequency depending on what transducer you have uh, you can pick the frequencies that you want if you get a active scan transducer or a chirp transducer for this unit some of the units come prepackaged with one you're going to want to select that because you want to use that chirp capability and get the best you can best information and best data out of that transducer possible so we're going to set it to high chirp and that's going to give us our best resolution possible and what you need to remember is higher frequencies and high chirp is very high frequency the higher the frequency the better the resolution in shallow water so the higher it goes the less range you have range capability from the transducer but the better the image the lower the frequency the better that travels over longer distances underwater in water and those are better for deeper waters okay so we've got our frequency set sensitivity sensitivity you can make adjustments with the slider um, generally speaking auto does a great job in this machine and you may want to just leave it at that but if you're getting a lot of noise or interference you can make adjustments by using the slider you can turn the auto on and off just by tapping the button down below and you see it's kind of highlighted in the corner there generally speaking like I said auto works very well for 99 percent of the water if it's very cloudy dirty water you might need to play with the sensitivity a little bit so that is the sensitivity color line you can adjust your color line here um, you can change the color of the depth line there okay so we've got our color line now you got advanced options you tap this don't be afraid it's not uh, complicated when you hear advanced sometimes you're like oh do I really want to go there um, fact is you probably won't need to 99 percent of the time with this noise rejection if you're getting the lines if you're getting interference electrical interference from something on the boat you're going to see lines showing like little dotted lines or speckly kind of lines going up and down in the screen that you're getting noise interference or it might be speckles all over if that's the case you go to advanced you go to noise rejection and you make your adjustments just remember the higher the uh, filters you put on here the lower the sensitivity of the machine so you're dulling it down you're not making it as capable as it can be so you want to have it you want to have these settings as low as possible uh, to get the maximum image capability out of the machine okay so that is uh, noise rejection same with surface clarity do the same thing scroll speed you want normal or fast if you do fast it's going to move a lot quicker and you see how these start stretching out well that's because they're in the beam for longer and it doesn't give you a very good reading so I would leave it in normal 99% of the time that's going to work just fine for you okay ping speed that you do want to max that's going to send the signal out as fast as a transducer can send the signal that's going to give you your best resolution and then you have manual mode down here manual mode you can turn on or off okay you go back those are your advanced and then more options you have different options here you can go back to the previous menu you can stop the sonar so that's going to stop it and where this comes in handy is if you have multiple transducers on board a lot of boats will have one glassed in the hull they might have one back on the transom and then you got one on the trolling motor up front 
Well, by doing this, if those transducers are running on the same or similar frequencies and they start interfering with one another, you get in deep enough water or whatever, you just want to stop one, you can power that one down just by stopping it like this. It's not turning the machine off. It's ready to go as soon as you turn it back on. So you just go to more options, stop sonar. We'll go back and turn it back on. You have the option of split or no split. So you can split the screen and have a zoom where you zoomed in on one side. You can have bottom lock where it's just locked into the bottom. And you can have a flasher. The flasher is showing you what's in that beam real time. So we'll go to more options. We'll go to split flasher back to no split. We'll go back. Then you have different palette options and you can just tap on them to pick the palette that you like best. There's all kinds of options. And we'll go back again, matter of personal preference, just pick what you like. Okay, we'll go back. Overlay down scan. You can overlay the down scan on this machine. You can tap that and it'll overlay down scan capability um, onto this screen. Um, I'm not a big fan of that with this particular uh, machine. So got a temperature graph and what that does, you can't really see it clearly on this image, but there's a little red line right along here that is a temperature graph. And if you have dips or increases in temperature, you'll see that so you can find thermals and things like that with that red line. Kind of goes away and you see you've got a temperature scale here, 65 to 80, and it's kind of sitting right in the middle there because it's 73.3. Uh, not very easy to see. What would be easier to see is the next one, the depth line. You see how black line popped up right here on the bottom, right at the start of the bottom? That just shows you exactly where those depth readings are reading from. So when you see this 15.6, that was right there at that point. So you can turn that on and off to get a very clear view at the bottom. Then you have an A-scope, and this works very similar to the flasher that we just saw, but this shows you what's in your beam real time. So you'll actually see fish in your beam real time. They'll pop up just like that as red marks, and you can see you got a big um, ball of bait right there. I kind of like having that offshore when I'm fishing offshore, uh, fishing the reefs, that kind of thing. It's handy. Bass fishing and inshore, I'm not so sure that's uh, as important. So that was your A-scope. We'll turn that off. And then you've got uh, preview, cursor only. So here we've got preview. You can turn the preview off. You can do cursor only. If you put a cursor on there, it's going to pop up when you mark a cursor, and it's going to show you your history of your... Um, readings. You also have, if we go back, you can do always, so it's always up there so you can see your history at the top. Again, clutters the screen up a little bit. It's handy if you're looking for patterns in the bottom dropping or uh, increasing something like that. Structure uh, just kind of lets you know if there are changes over time, you know, maybe subtle changes, that kind of thing. We'll turn the preview off so that we can enjoy a full screen with all the information. And last but not least is Fish ID. Fish ID, you can have symbols, you can have depths, or you can have symbols and depths show on the screen. So that's your menu options for your broadband sonar, um, your chirp sonar display. You have a couple of other sonar options here. You've got side scan. Side scan, inshore or offshore, freshwater, very useful to have. More so freshwater and inshore. Offshore, this tends to not work as well in deeper water. Uh, it's good for finding um, schools of fish maybe near the surface. Uh, but depth range capability on this is rather limited because it is a very high frequency, just like we talked about earlier. Okay, so to set this up, um, you pull up your menu and you can set your range. Okay, we're out to 60 feet right now, auto. 
your frequency 800 you've got two options 455 or 800 and you've got your contrast palette again you can change your palettes we've got advanced surface clarity again you don't want to crank it up if you don't have to because you're just reducing the sensitivity um, if your transducer is mounted uh, invertly you can on trolling motor or something you can flip it left to right so it inverts the image a couple things you're going to want to remember um, in an auto mode if you're scouting and you're looking for fish you're looking for structure um, you can set your range you might want to kick it out to a little bit further there's a couple things that you're going to want to do though uh, you can set your range you can leave it on auto that's fine but I tend to like to uh, pick a certain range 60 feet something like that and have it stay at that so it doesn't uh, again change the image size and constantly changing it keeps it at a steady image so pick a, a range that works for you but one thing you need to remember when you do that if you're scouting and you're looking for structure and you want that um, signal to get out further you're going to want to set it to 455 because again the higher the frequency the better the resolution but the less range you have or sensitivity over a longer range so if you're scouting set it to 455 once you start finding what you're looking for you may want to go back in and set it at 800 kilohertz and then adjust your range accordingly um, uh, auto contrast again you can adjust your contrast depending on water conditions the auto is generally going to do a good job you might need to tweak it just a little bit um, but 99% of the times you're going to be fine setting it in auto unless you're in very very silty muddy water uh, you may have to play with it a little bit more than usual uh, your palette you can adjust your palette and pick whatever colors you want pick whatever palette you like um, advanced surface clarity if you're getting a lot of uh, fog on the surface again you can adjust that uh, just remember you're losing capability if you crank it up um, so that was the advanced uh, more options uh, you can stop sonar again so if you got interference or you're running multiple transducers that kind of thing you can stop the sonar you can view left and right you can view left or you can view right only so we'll go back to left and right we'll hit back and you can turn range lines on and that just draws lines out you got your scale at the bottom here and you can draw those in so I like to get them out of the screen out of the way so I have a better view you can zoom in and out with the zoom buttons down below here data windows just like we explained you can set up your data windows so of course you definitely want depth uh, water temperature is a nice thing to have and uh, there's a couple of other things that I think should be on this screen so we're gonna go and each screen that you set up when you put your data overlay is just for that screen uh, it won't be for the, the uh, broadband sonar that we just had each one is set it needs to be set up individually that way you're not carrying over data that you don't really need for each screen so we're gonna edit the overlay here we'll hit menu we're gonna add one and if I'm in a tournament, I need to know what time it is. It's very important that I'm not going to miss the weigh-in. So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to find time. And I'm going to put time on here. I'm going to close that and save it. And there's my time there. Now, hold on a second. I want to edit that. I want to make that a little bit bigger, and I don't want it there. So what I'm going to do is I will go back. I'll do Edit Overlay. I'll tap it to highlight it see how the blue box is right there then I'm gonna drag it down to where I think that should be I'm gonna put it right here and I want that that's kinda of hard to see it's so small very important the time to me in a tournament so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna hit save and there it is it's saved in there okay and there's other things that you may want to put in here that are important to you all kinds of things just a matter of customizing and putting what you want uh, but remember that you're going to set this up differently fresh water than you would salt water and each screen is its own So if we go back here, you notice I got the time down at the bottom here If I go back to sonar, it's just got the two data boxes that I put in there now We're going to talk about down scan So we got down scan Tap on that 
and this is the same kind of technology as the side scan obviously just pointing straight down now where I said you didn't want to overlay your down scan on your broadband this is the reason why these marks that you see here these fish that you see Lawrence and Simrad have a unique feature called fish reveal and what they do is they take the chirp fish finding capability that is really really good at identifying fish and the size of fish they take that data pull it out of the sounder option and then overlay it into here so they don't overlay the depth information and the bottom structure and structure and that kind of thing they're only overlaying the fish so this gives you the best of both worlds you've got really high definition of the bottom almost like a 3d uh, version of what your bottom looks like with all your structure and the definition the high definition of the structure and then you have your fish reveal your fish ID very easy to identify fish which on a regular down scan isn't always so you can easily identify the fish where they are in relation to the structure so an excellent screen and this is the one that I would be using rather than doing an overlay and what I like to do actually in fresh water and what I like to do in salt water is I'll set up a combo screen so I'll have my sonar on one side and then I'll have my down scan on the other side by side. I'll save that. And you've got the best of both worlds right there. Now, one thing I'm going to show you here is if you want to customize and you want this to be the bigger window, you can do that. And the way you do that is simply touching your power button. Then you're going to go to adjust splits. What the adjust splits do is I want the reveal to be the bigger window. So I'm going to save that. And you see how I've shifted it over, and now this is my big window. Great combination to have here. Now you notice there's no depth information up here, so I'm going to want to put depth in here. I will press the power button. I'll go to Edit Overlay. I'm going to go to Add. And I want Sonar depth and there it is right there so I'll close that I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and I'm actually going to bring it down here and I'm going to hit save and there it is great combination to have now if I go back that's going to be this option right here pops right up all right so let's go back to down scan down scan again you can zoom in and out using your zoom buttons um, range same thing on the range there I like to set a particular range so it doesn't jump around too much uh, frequency again 455 800 depending on what you're doing your frequency is going to be important there okay you've got uh, auto contrast so you can adjust your contrast again depending on what works for you Auto tends to work the best 99% of the time. You've got different palette options again. If you want to change your palette colors, you're more than welcome to. You've got advanced features. So you've got surface clarity again. If you're getting a lot of noise and clutter at the surface, you can make that adjustment. And then fish reveal options. This will control your fish reveal in here. You can adjust your sensitivity, the color line, surface clarity, and you can change your palette on the fish reveal too so you can change your coloration and see what really pops and works for you that's actually a pretty nice one there we're going to leave that like that then you have more options again you can stop your sonar just like uh, before you can turn the fish reveal off if you want it to be a regular down scan you can turn that off range line same thing you can turn range lines on again i don't like to clutter up the screen with that i find it distracting i like just using the range key on the side and then preview same thing you can do cursor all only or always and have the preview at the top of the screen there just like previously so that is your down scan that pretty much summarizes the saltwater setup of the elite fs we did cover live site and active target uh, in the freshwater video in this series that was video number two in this series so definitely check out that video if you're interested in adding and setting up live site and active target to your Lawrence FS 
If you have questions about uh, this setup or anything to do with the FS, please post them down in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you know when the next videos in the series are available. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you back here soon.